This is the Nintendo Players UK podcast, episode 14. Today I'm joined by guest Ben Pritchard, who's the developer of Bullion. Ben, would you like to introduce yourself properly? Um, yeah, well, I'm, I, like you say, I'm Ben Pritchard. I'm one of um, a number of developers for, for, um, for Bullion. So um, it's it, very important to stress that it's not just me. I'm not not um, not a solo dev anymore. There's um, there's about five of us currently working on Bullion as it as it stands. Um, so it's it, me, uh, my best friend and business partner Paul, who's uh, also a programmer on it, and then we've got um, that we've got Matthew and Stuart who are uh, who are both artists, and also um, that uh, Ramsey is our um, sound engineer. And we've had other people working on the project over time, but um, yes, so I'm already rambling slightly off a topic. So, <laughs> so Bullion's out on the 10th of Feb. We'll, we'll talk more specifically about Bullion in a bit. So mm-hmm. you've been a games developer for a long time. Would you like to say a bit about your background and how you started? Uh, yeah, sure. Well, I mean, um, the thing is, I'm not a career game developer. It's a it's a it's a, a part time slash hobby interest that um, I've had since uh, since I was a kid. Actually, I mean, I grew up. Um, uh, yeah, I grew up in the arcades of the of the late eighties, early nineties. Um, just blown away by the you know these machines that um, today you know you, you, what you carry around in your pocket is several thousand times more powerful with the with the, with the phones. But you know those arcade machines was where I started out, and it's it was just fascinating. And then from there, um, my primary school was actually very forward thinking and taught programming. So um, you know I got a, a, an early introduction to to code. And then it just kind of grew from there, really. And um, around the mid '90s, I kind of were, um, by that point, I've met this uh, met Paul, um, who I was pre- previously mentioned. We kind of became um, programming sparring partners, if you like. Imagine sort of like two guys in a gym trying to lift their head. You know, I can lift a hundred. Well, I can lift one hundred and ten. It was kind of like a geek equivalent to that. So um, <laughs> you know, you got these two these two nerds in their in their um, in their teens trying to out program each other by making the coolest game thing they could um and um, we very quickly decided that we wanted to keep it as a hobby rather than actually try and make you know, make careers out of it which then got vindicated by the first accounts of crunch time that uh, started to come out of the industry a few years later so um yeah uh, it kind of just grew out of that we had a couple of titles back in the 90s on the Atari ST going back a good few years now because yep I'm old you can just probably just about see the gray (laughs) through the front on the camera more so in the beard maybe um but uh, and then um yeah uh, about uh, um best part of 15 years ago now we started uh, tinkering with some mobile titles sort of like little tributes to our old uh, our old arcade machines that we'd grown up on sort of like space invader type machine type um games and things like that and um then we kind of like built up again from there started play, uh, playing around with uh, with things for consoles mainly off of um off of public feedback which because uh, we'd started doing sort of expos and um, and showcases by that point and people were saying hey this is really cool but it would work better as sort of like a two player game on the on um, on PC or on Xbox so um our last title which was actually nearly 10 years ago we released that now um, it made it, it actually made it went through like a metamorphosis from a mobile title where you had two mobile uh, phones with a race mode on it to a split screen game on a, on the Xbox 360 as it was at the time, and then from there we we then thought right let's you know let's try and do something bigger and better than we've ever done before, and out of that grew Bullion. Yeah, so that was quite a road to Bullion then. So, <laughs> like I said, I'm old. <laughs> yeah, what led you to the decision to make Bullion? Um, well, it's partly because of this last title that we did, which um had this uh, it was bright colours, little uh, little about uh, uh, bouncy ball type characters. I mean, I, mu- I must admit, I'm going to go out on a limb and probably get myself uh, get myself vilified by all of Nintendo uh, UK <laughs> by saying that uh, the biggest influence going right back was probably Sonic. Because of the colours, the colour scheme and Sonic kind of like, um, you know, and you've got to allow me this because that was in the 90s and, you know, it was a long time ago. But, um, yeah, for, you know, th- those kind of bright colours inspired the kind of games we wanted to make. We want to make fun games. It doesn't have to be a huge, super immersive experience. Just want to have fun. So, um, 
like I said, we did this. The, the previous title was sort of little bouncy ball characters and lots of loud, uh, of, uh, loud farty noises and things like that. And, uh, and kids loved it. Uh, we had people queuing up to play this thing at the shows that we had. Uh, we had. So we thought we want bullion to kind of like grow from that. We want to have that kind of fun, family friendly vibe where, you know, kids and their parents can sit down and play it together. So, um, you know, if there's any N Nintendo players out there who've got who are a bit older, have got kids of their own half terms coming up. Great time to get bullying out there. You know, play against your kids, show them who's boss. <laughs> but well, um, yeah. yeah, Nintendo was... events I run um, for North Wales, we are family friendly. We have like kids and grown ups playing together. So mm -hmm. we're looking forward to featuring it at our event. Mm -hmm. So when you were developing bullying, um, it must have been quite a long journey of the whole development of the game because it's quite an in depth game, I believe. Um, what was your favorite part of the development? <laughs> Oh, good grief! Um, I think the number one part has the the the, the bit that is the absolute favourite has got to be the people we've met along the journey, because um, from day one, this was something we learned again from our previous titles. We've uh, we decided as soon as we had a, even the roughest prototype, we were going to try and slap production level graphics and sound on it. So we had the first character in the first island and some and some basic sound effects and, and vocals and that sort of thing for him. And we just cloned him up a couple of times so we could get the full four player effects. And then we started taking it to shows to get it in front of people and just getting people's feedback and just watching people enjoy playing it. First of all, it proved that the idea was going to be going to work and it was going, it was something that was going to, we could actually take further time developing. Secondly, we got a lot of feedback and a lot of very positive response. And thirdly, we, we just made so many friends. I mean, streamers groups like yourself uh, like yourselves you know the nintendo players group all around the country that uh, you know just from doing these shows and getting out there and talking to people and having fun great um so obviously there's the fun element of the families getting together um what was the hardest part of the development of bullion marketing <laughs> i think well, it's a, i say that i mean that's, that's in jest i mean any indie will pro indie developer will probably say the same sort of thing but uh, i mean the hardest bit i think because we we call ourselves a grassroots game studio you know, we're not a career studio we do it for the love of making games and also because the people that some of the people who are with us they're trying to get a um, get a toehold in the industry and move on up their career ladder but um because of that, we we swore from day one we wouldn't put the people under crunch conditions or anything like that, and that meant that the development cycle was a lot slower than a lot of games. It's taken us a lot longer. We've had various sort of like life events to manage during that time. We've had sort of like team members, you know, people join in and had, then had to go had to step down again because their life pressures, and just managing that fluidity whilst still remaining true to what we're trying to, trying to do that that was probably the toughest bit. Fair enough. Uh, marketing's always hard, no matter what your business is or <laughs> Ain't that true. your venture. Um, so when when it launches on the 10th of February, which is very soon, um, what do you hope to see when it officially launches? Smiling faces. <laughs> Smiling faces I mean, all uh, round. Sorry? <laughs> Smiling faces all round, yes. I mean, I mean it was... It... We, I mean, we, we, like I said, we, our philosophy is that we wanted to, to make something bigger and badder than we'd ever done before, you know, something uh, something that was the next level up. We also wanted to give these guys who are working with us, who um, so Matthew, Ramsey, Stuart, and everyone else who's been on the team over time, we wanted to, like I say, give them that push that, that, push that could hopefully get them over the must-have experience barrier and get their, get them, their careers moving the way they wanted them to. And we, you know, and we wanted people to have fun playing it. And if we, you know, if we happen to make some uh, make some money out of it and get a, a good number of downloads, that's a bonus. Right now, we just want the, we just want people to to enjoy it, and that's all that matters for us. Cool. So, given that bullying is out soon, we've got quite a few Nintendo players communities who would like to feature your game. So we've got some upcoming dates. So. North Wales is actually on the 17th of February, so we're looking mm -hmm. forward to that. Um, we've got South End on the 25th of February, and then we've got mm -hmm. um, Gloucestershire and Liverpool on March the 24th, and Basingstoke and Bristol on March the 16th. So you've got a good month and a half of showcasing your game across the UK in different regions. So, yeah, um, exciting times for you guys. Definitely, yes. Yeah. 
I mean, um, we actually have so for those events. I think um, I've, I've mentioned the I've mentioned this bit, um, when we've been talking previously outside the the podcast. We do have sort of like some tournament guidelines and things like that. So, um, the, available for you know for people who want to run tournaments with their groups and um i'm you know i'm pretty sure that we can find some merchandise or some uh, some keys or something uh, um some product codes so you know so we can uh, we're more than happy to step in and uh, and help out on the prize front brilliant so looking forward to that um so if if anyone wants to look you up as uh, bullion does bullion have any followings in social media or your team uh, so well, there's Bullion Game, which is the uh, the Twitter handle. That's kind of like it, or should I say X these days? I don't know. I, I still call it Twitter. X, formerly known as Twitter, is the official. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so there's that. Um, there's our Discord channel, uh, and the best bet though is to just go to go to bulliongame.com, the website, and um, that's got all the links to all the social media. It's also got the demo downloads. If you're quick, you can still get to the demos before it, uh, before it all launches. Um, yeah, everything's available from there. So yeah, bullion game, all as one dot com. Cool. And have you got anything else you'd like to say to your potential fans of bullion? Sorry? Have you got anything else you'd like to say to your potential fans of bullion? Enjoy yourselves, guys. Thank Just you. um watch out because um we know it can get quite uh, the rivalries can get quite intense. So um imagine sort of like you um, uh, when someone blue shells you a Mario Kart or something like that. So uh, we actually have a disclaimer on the website that says that we that we won't be held responsible for any sort of like family fallings out if you decide if you decide to play bullion and you get in a bit of a, a, a bit of an argument, you picked up the controllers you chose to play, but just have fun. <laughs> Enjoy. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you for being a guest on the podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the conversation as well. Thank you.